Hello, Alex here, and today we're going to introduce a new mini-series on different compositional techniques and how you can use them in your photography. Today we're going to talk about negative space and how to use that in your own work. Let's get into it. So let's start by defining what negative space actually is. Negative space is when you have a portion of your frame, be this in a photo or a piece of art, that is deliberately left empty so that you give space to your subject, but also through the use of that negative space, draw the focus into what your subject is. Uh, the frame doesn't have to be literally empty, but that is the most common thing. You have like a block of color or no light at all around your subject, and that really does draw the viewer's eyes into whatever the subject is. Generally, the subject will be quite small when you do this, but that isn't necessarily always the case, but it is definitely usually the case. This can also have an effect of making a small subject appear or feel even smaller than they actually are within the frame, which can be used for artistic purposes. So we're going to start off by looking at some of my own photos where I have used negative space as part of the composition. Not all of them are just a block of blank color or black space, and I want to show the different ways that you can use negative space in your own work. After we get through those images that definitely are negative space, we're going to talk some that are definitely not using negative space, even if they might appear like it at first. Okay, so now we're hopefully going to get a picture-in-picture -picture view with me down in the corner, and we're going to go through the photos that I've picked out. If you feel like you want to dive deeper into any of the pictures or just look at them a bit longer, feel free to pause the video because I don't want to stay on each one for too long. Okay, so this first example is pretty clear-cut. We have a tall vertical frame, the chicken ornament in the bottom left corner, and then just this swathe of orange warm space around it. And that lack of content in that frame draws your eye down to the corner where the chicken is. So it focuses your attention, but also in this particular case, the chicken is looking out into that void and it, it looks nice. This is all going to be very, you know, artsy, poncy, pretentious stuff, but you kind of have to do that when you're talking about something in a, an academic sense. Here we have a slightly unusual example. What I've done here when I was photographing these Tic Tacs, I deliberately closed the blinds partially so there'd be a wedge of light on the countertop and then left the corners blank. So in that case, the negative space around the this shaft of light or sliver of light emphasizes a feeling of tightness in the frame. Um, it makes things feel cramped, which is what I wanted. It makes the Tic Tacs feel closer and it makes it feel like there are more there than there are. And that's just one way that you can employ this. You can create a feeling of emptiness, like we saw in the first picture with the chicken, or a feeling of almost a claustrophobic effect, I guess, where you can really compress the scene in a way. Here's another classic example. Robin in the bottom right corner, empty, just blurred to nonsense background. That was shot at f2.8 on the 300 millimeter lens, and I was very close to the Robin, so the background is just it's gone. Here's another example showing where you can have just nothing essentially on half of the frame and it makes a nice picture. So here the tulip is off center, but the background itself is just the leaves, the long grass where I found this singular tulip. And it it works quite well. You know, there's an absolute void of nothingness around the, the tulip and that draws your eye to it itself. And the fact that there's a stark color contrast between the red, yellow, orange tones of the tulip versus the green in the background kind of emphasizes that a bit more. So here I would say that the negative space is reinforcing the difference between the warm and the cool tones, as well as providing a general compositional aid. This is a different example where you can have things in the scene, but they serve as a sort of negative space because we have foliage, trees, the grass, but all of it is framing this bench. You know, the bench is what your eye focuses on. There's nothing going on in the scene apart from the bench. So even though the bench isn't the only thing, in the scene, the rest of what's there see, acts as a sort of negative space. Here's an example where the, the absence of content in the scene is not the use of negative space. Here it's the background itself which is the subject. There is no central subject like a basketball or a shoe or whatever you might find around the basketball court to actually focus your eyes on. So here the 
emptiness of the frame and the textures within it are the actual subject. So this is not negative space. Here is another one where there isn't really a use of negative space because in this case, the ripples find the ones on the bottom do draw your eye up towards this coffee cup lid, which I did throw in the bin, by the way. I didn't leave it there, but I did dispose of it after I took the photo. But the ones on top go beyond it and bring your eyes away from the subject, so they're not all drawing your eye to the subject. This is a photo of my lovely kitty Trixie. So here, it's not negative space. You have a very neutral-ish background surrounding Trixie. There's not a lot going on. You have two cushions either side, and they do angle in somewhat towards her. But this isn't negative space. This is more of a symmetrical composition. This is a questionable case of negative space. This is my other cat, Remy, just sitting by the window when it was getting dark. And she's just having fun sitting there, grooming herself as she does. She's such a good kitty. But the background, it's just the two strips of light coming in the window. There's nothing really going on. There's nothing actually happening there. But in a more subtle way, than with the two cushions pointing in towards Trixie, they're pointing your eyes off to the side of the frame towards where Remy is. So I could argue that this is an example of using negative space, but not a great one. So thank you for sticking around to the end of this video where we talked about the use of negative space in photographs. I didn't want to go too in depth here, and I think I want to keep this mini series at a very high level, just so it's not too inaccessible. You know, I want these to be very easy to grasp without kind of alienating people who are newer to photography. So if you enjoyed the video, let me know below. If you want me to cover another topic, like say symmetry, the rule of thirds, golden ratio, whatever, let me know in the comments below. If you want to support the channel, consider subscribing or donating to my Patreon, where the tiers start at just one euro per month. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Shaka1277 for new photographs every single day. Bye bye for now.